Hello and welcome to FIA Insights, where we give you a look into the remarkable world of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. My name's Alexa and I'm here to guide you through everything that you need to know about the FIA's role within Formula E. We're talking track building, how energy management works, rules, regulations, and maybe what telemetry you will and won't see from these cars. Make sure you hit subscribe and that like button if you want to see more behind the scenes content like this. Let's go. In the Formula E Championship, the FIA has a very wide role. We would say it's one of the championship, which is by its definition, by its essence, very different from the other. FIA has to be involved in different, different topics like uh, technical um, regulations, but not only the overviewing of the building cars, uh, finding the technical single suppliers of, uh, of the parts. By the fact that uh, Formula E uh, involves uh, uh, manufacturers, technology providers on different levels for the innovative uh, powertrain, uh, that contributes a lot in the development of the electric power and train in general. For a long time, this idea about proving technology on the racetrack has been has existed in motorsport. And you can look back through the years, ABS, traction control, stability control. These are just some features which started their life on the racetrack and have eventually made their way to production vehicles. You'll go back all the way to 1950s, in fact, 1954, Jaguar C-Type 1 Le Mans with disc brakes, the first time ever disc brakes were used in an automotive application, and now they're on every road car in the world. So it's always been our ethos, that, that, that test bed, if you like, for high performance, pushing the technology to limit, ultimately should trickle down to consumers. For electric vehicles, there is a big uh, area of uh, technical learnings between motorsport and uh, the core business, our core business, which is electric vehicles for roads. Electric powertrains have a strong flexibility in the usage, so you can really learn a lot from uh, a car which is pushed to high performance like Formula E, mm -hmm. uh, you can learn a lot that you can transfer to normal uh, electric vehicles. Actually, Formula E is changing the way people see electric vehicles in a way that they are perceived more exciting, uh, more performing, of course. Electrification only 10 years ago was considered a technology for slow cars, but the reality is that electrification can deliver an amazing performance and at the same time can be very efficient. And this is what generation three cars are. They raise the bar at the same time on the performance side, but on the efficiency side. For us, for Jaguar, that, that original ethos of proving the technology on the racetrack and bring it to consumers. Like I said, all the way back to the start point of, in fact, our company has always been, been core to how we approach racing. In the ideal world, you want the ability to blend, of course, the brand benefits, the, the promotional benefit of racing, also with that kind of technology transfer. And for us, it's really important that we have the brand pillar, the tech transfer pillar as well. So for us, it's a critical, uh, fundamental, shall we say, part of our, our decision as to why we entered Formula E all the way back in 2015. We looked at a number of categories of motorsports, but it was clear as a car company, we were gonna to transition to an all electric future. And in fact, from 2025, Jaguar becomes a modern luxury, all electric car company, shifting our focus to, to full electric vehicles. So from our point of view, our motor racing activity had to therefore be all electric. And what better place to be than here in the FIA Formula World Championship, the pinnacle of electric racing. So that, that was our, our decision back in 2015, and we've seen the championship continue to grow. But really importantly, that the, the technical regulations and, and how we go racing this championship should be aligned to our future road car strategy. And it is here in Formula E. focused on safety and working in race control, they also provide the components for the cars. This allows the teams to not just focus on the team and the racing themselves, but also to make sure that they're working on what's most important to them when it comes to the race to road, the powertrain. Let's talk a little bit about energy management because that's quite a confusing thing for someone who's not particularly familiar with Formula E. In the, the battery itself, you have a certain amount of energy that we're able to deploy throughout the, the course of the race. What I find fascinating now, though, is the, the fact that we're not only just using that energy that we start the race with, regenerating energy, um, especially through the motor on the front axle, and bringing that energy back into the battery. On a typical race, up to 40% of the energy that we deploy during that roughly 45 minutes is actually being regenerated as we're going around. How does regen kind of work? Is it that you're not 
putting your foot to the floor anymore or? There's a number of different ways that the drivers are able to sort of manage the cars and the systems on the car to bring that energy back in. But ostensibly, the energy that you would be typically losing through slowing the car down, you're now harnessing that and bringing it back into the system so that you can then deploy it at a later stage where you're looking to power and accelerate away as well. Okay. And that's where those efficiencies come in. So again, the better you do that, the faster you're going to be at the end of the day. Energy management is uh, something that is enforced, but it's not part of the regulations. They have an allocation of energy mm -hmm. to complete the race. So it's quite uh, challenging for the teams. They basically have to manage really well the energy and especially the recovery of the energy with these cars. As, as you know, uh, the Formula E cars, many, many uh, percentage of the energy that they consume over a race, it's, it's, it's regenerated by the car itself when they brake uh, for the corners. So this is quite important for the teams to manage. You know you start the race with not enough energy battery, battery level, let's say, to, to reach the end of the race. So you need to recharge a lot throughout the race. So it's all about how you manage, how you spend that energy, because everything you spend, you won't recharge it again, even though, of course, when we break, we recharge from the front and the rear now with the Gen 3. When you're racing in the front, you just want to be flat, flat out everywhere. But of course, you're like, OK, well, if I do that, I'm not going to reach the end very quickly. So um, that's something completely new that I'm working on to get better at. But for sure, I'm, I'm just being fully honest that that's my weak, weak area. We need to be constantly thinking ahead and not just in the present of, OK, I defend my position, I use energy, because then you just don't reach the end, let's say. When has good energy management or bad energy management, is there an example of when it's made a big difference to your race you can think of? Yeah, for example, Rome. I was behind Mitch, in, I was second, and uh, Mitch goes for attack and we, before the race, had a kind of a, an idea of when the car ahead takes the attack, I will push a little bit to mm -hmm. try to undercut. I decided, OK, in that lap, I need to go faster, but I over consumed too much energy, like way too much. Yeah. So I was literally like a percent and a half down compared to Mitch Evans. So that's where I literally I destroyed my race with only one lap, which that's the tricky bit in Formula E. So somebody said to me that you have no telemetry during the race. Though. What does that mean? So the teams, they don't have access to mm -hmm. the telemetry from the car. OK. Uh, and they cannot send information to the car. Let's say if the energy is not very well optimized for the race, mm -hmm. and then make a change in the computer here, and then okay. send it back to the car as the car is running during the race. Mm -hmm. This is forbidden. Ah, so this okay. is a two-way data stream is forbidden. Mm -hmm. The data that is collected is a one-way data stream, so always from the car to the garages, okay. uh, but mainly for FIA to look at the, the data. Mm -hmm. So FIA is controlling the regulations. If you're not outside of uh, uh, the power mode, if you're not outside using more energy than you should, and many other different sensors that you have on the car. Mm -hmm. So FIA is looking at it, uh, and if something goes off the limits or uh, goes off the regulations, you get a penalty in the middle of the race. What kind of information do you have on the car and how do you feed that back to the team? So I have a lot of information. So mm -hmm. all my dash from tire uh, pressure, tire temperature, brake temperature. But mainly what is most important is that we have an energy strategy during the race mm -hmm. and I feed back that back to the garage. Mm -hmm. So I, I send by radio. So the only one side information you can send is radio. I have X amount of energy. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to see. You don't, don't want to say that because the other teams they might listen to it. Ah. So we have a code. We mm -hmm. have an encrypted code. Let's say B W Z F. Mm -hmm. And then you put on the computer here B W Z F, and it shows 56 percent energy mm -hmm. and the less uh, consumption. And so when it comes to telemetry, how does it differ in Formula E from perhaps other um, FIA championships? I think the biggest difference between the Formula E and the other championships are on the energy side. Mm -hmm. Because energy is so fundamental to our race strategy, uh, a lot of the effort that we put and that we communicate to the team is about the energy strategy during mm -hmm. the race. And this with the other championships you don't have. Um, of course, many other championships, especially endurance ones, but also F1, mm -hmm. you have like uh, a fuel saving. But the rate between how much fuel you have to save and how that impacts the overall race is much less than this. So this has a much stronger component uh, on, the, on the amount of energy. That's why we finish with zero, zero, right? The target is to run at zero a few meters before the line. And that is it. Thank you so much for joining us as we explored the wonderful wide world of Formula E. We'll see you next time for more FIA Insights.